It shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you if I told you, according to a recent report by the city of Vancouver, Vancouverites throw out 2.6 million cups of coffee every week. That is a devastatingly high amount, and this issue has to be resolved because of all the harm these cups cause to our environment. According to Andrea Riemer, the cups take up about 22% of the volume of our on-street garbage system, and they're costing us literally millions of dollars to deal with. What's making recycling them difficult is the separation of the plastic lining from the paper. Another issue encountered is the need to collect different parts separately. Another problem with caffeine consumption is the brewers we all have at our homes. According to the NPD group, a marketing research firm, about 40% of Canadians have one in our homes. There are enough K-cups in landfills that could wrap around our planet 12 times. What could possibly make this even more problematic is that K-cups will take thousands of years to decompose in a landfill and will contribute to our growing problem with plastic pollution. Because of this ever-growing problem, Keurig K-Cups inventor, John Sylvan, is regretful about having ever invented such a wasteful product. Direct quoting him, I feel bad sometimes that I ever did it. So they found a solution. Through the company's Grounds to Grow On program, they encourage their customers to mail their empty K-Cups back to Keurig, where the plastic pods and aluminum tops are burned in energy incinerators. But see, now there's a new problem. Incinerating trash is known to waste lots of energy and to put harmful, cancer-causing toxins into the atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere. Thankfully, after years of growing and demand for Keurig's machines and coffee pods, it all seems to be finally cooling down. By the August of 2015, the company reported pod sales were down 1% from the year before it, while sales of brewing machines and accessories fell to 26% less. But that's still not enough. So now we know what's going on, but why is this important? The toxic chemicals in plastic interact with water and leach into the ground, which in turn pollute to underground reservoirs. This harms wildlife and people. One of the main components of the lining on plastic cups is HDPE. A number two stamp identifies it. HDPE stands for High Density Polyethylene. Other chemicals are added as flame retardants or color agents, all of which affect hormone activity. Even though this is the safest plastic available, because it is very non-reactive, it still cannot be considered good. HDPE is non-biodegradable, meaning living organisms or bacteria cannot decompose it. It can take centuries to decompose, so recycling them is our best option. As previously stated, these plastics affect all four spheres, which means the harm caused to the environment is reaching all aspects of our Earth. So, what can be done? What is the solution to this? One of the ideas pitched is to completely get rid of coffee cups. In New Zealand, a campus coffee shop is no longer selling coffee in single-use coffee cups. The Eden Cafe is instead asking patrons to bring their own cups or take a ceramic cup and they must later return it. Vancouver might be aiming to do the same thing. But that is not our only option. Taking into consideration the consumption of coffee in our society, at an average of 152 liters per person, that just isn't a believable solution. Returning to Andrea Riemer, she says placing a ban on coffee cups could also be problematic. Practically speaking, you can't carry coffee in your purse, she said. So we need some way of allowing people to go on the streets to buy coffee. We will be working with retailers to see what makes the most sense for them. So banning is unrealistic, but there's another possibility. Binner's projects say they have a solution, putting a deposit on disposable cups. Godefroy, one of the people working on said project, mentioned another upside to making disposable cups depositable. There are a lot of people on the streets that survive on recycling material, and so we believe that by putting a deposit on cups, you could solve both problems. People who regularly comb through trash cans for a refundable bottle, or cans, also known as binners, say a similar refund deposit system should be and could be applied to coffee cups. Returning to the coffee brewing cups, the best way to address their problem is to use existing technology to make K-cups reusable or compostable. 
There are many ways our consumerism is negatively affecting the environment, but there are also solutions to many of these problems. It is long past the time to need to act.